got this here, it's actually untreated, cost virtually nothing. And we've got Daniel here, and he's going to uh, help me chop it up. So it's 300 wide, and the corrugator iron's 200, so we're going to do not 200, bud. Too easy. So he's a he's a mechanic by trade, and I'm a I'm a YouTuber by trade, and we've done two pieces so far, and they couldn't be more fucking out. Look at the difference in size. Look at that. If Ab was here right now, he'd be just shaking his head, going, "What the fuck, lads?" And this is our tape measure because our tape measure is broken, so we just got that, and we still can't get it right. Right, you cut the next one, and then I'll do one after you. You can't be any worse than us combined. You're on, you're on your own this one, okay? Remember, safety first. All right, you're into it. How's that feel? Pretty good. Holy shit! I think I'm gonna put you in charge. That's good, mate. Can you repeat, or is that just a fluke? No, I'll do it again. Don't cut the veranda, I will kill you. 200. At least we've got the right tools for the job, like this uh, straight edge you're using. Rusty old sort. So I, I got what you're doing, you're watching the saw blade rather than that line on the saw. The, the guide line on the saw is wrong, isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah, so you're watching the actual saw blade. That's smart, I guarantee that's perfect. Let's measure it. Bang on, mate, this end here. Yeah, on the money. The reason I stuffed mine up is because I was using the guideline, and the guideline is not right, and he's a clever bastard. He said, no, just watch the saw blade, because that's where it's cutting. I don't think you're supposed to watch the, I think you're supposed to use the guideline, but I'm not a builder either. I'm not a builder's asshole, but I'm gonna try your method and see if I can get it straight. Right, I've cut mine using Daniel's method. You're gonna measure up and check out how I was. How we get on? Pretty good. Pretty good? Two undy? Two undy? Beautiful. Okay. So there's our four bits of wood and there's our corrugated iron. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna smash this out sort of flat at one end. To start with. Sort of like. Right, I three at that end and three at the other end. And while I'm doing this, uh, Daniel's cut some more. Beautiful. Oh, that was all uh, done very quickly and done very perfectly. Thank you. All good. So we bent this around the corner really easily. It actually bends well, doesn't it, mate? It does. I'm gonna smack a, smack a uh, couple of screws in there, we sweet. <laughs> Easy. So this is really easy with two people, last time I did it with myself and uh, I was trying to film it with this and hold the bloody phone and everything and I've got Daniel here, bends it over and uh, it's too easy, just bends it over and look at that, I'm ready to just put my, my hole in, we're going to go probably about here on that one mate, yep. Nice. So there's our, our kayak mate, our canoe. Few bits in the middle, I reckon, eh? I reckon. Okay, so we've got this piece in, and oh, yeah, no, it should be right. We'll just bend it down. That, my friend, is a beautiful thing. Okay, we had some breakage. This piece of wood split, so we just stuck another piece in. We don't talk about that. Other than that, it's perfect. We have a planter box. Now, what we're going to do is just drill some holes for drainage and make another two. But I think it's for another day, eh? I think so. Yeah. Currently I'm taking Bruno's stitches out. So I'm going to do one end and doing some gardening this morning so my nails aren't exactly clean for the job. Separating that and then pulling the other one out like that. Do it again, this time this side. Gonna hit the truck. So I'm turning a bit. Let's give it a bit of tit and blow it out the back. Woo! -hoo! Well, that was fun, eh, Bruno? Look at that. It's flat as a pancake. Well, it's a lot better than it was. It's uh, nowhere near as corrugated as it was. That's a lot better. So, the old Land Cruiser proved to be the best tool for getting this uh, corrugated iron a lot flatter. Everything in life is like this, eh? It's always the simple. Simplest way is the best way. Just drive over at the bloody truck 
and sweet as bro. Do one more drive over it, then I'll put the hose on it, and it'll be like, be good. Like I don't have enough firewood, I might need some more, right? Yeah, here comes firewood, Matt, and you know what he's got in the back of his truck. Get him behind, Po. Get him, Big Z. Get him, Big Z. Who's that, Pa, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, here's Firewood Matt. There you go. Yes, hey, mate. Good to see you, buddy. What have we got this time? Douglas fir. Douglas fir. Fucking awesome. How dry is that? Pretty wet, is it? Oh. Yeah. Nothing that uh, a bit of storage in the old woodshed will do. That's right. Anyway, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Look, man, uh, you're slowly buying me boat off me with. A firewood. <laughs> How many loads that now? Oh, let's count. oh man, no, you get to see anyway. How was it on the boat? Yeah, good. Bloody good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the bridge is all good. And... Oh, yeah. She had taken on much water that rain. No. There's a little bit on the deck. Yeah, right, eh? Put the salt water for one. Super right. Yeah. What do you got there? Oh, you got some planters. A oh, greenhouse. Brilliant, mate. How much was that? No shit. Yeah, bloody good. We greenhouse. Oh, you better propagate stuff on that. Oh, well, uh, don't ask me about anything about gardening because I don't know anything about gardening, but it'll be, uh... That makes two of us. Yeah, well, we'll just, between <laughs> the two of us, we might nut something up. I'll show you what I'm doing over here. Yeah, Daniel and I, we smashed out the one at the bottom. Yeah. And I just made this one here a lot faster. And what I did was I've been running the truck over, over the tin, getting a bit flatter, just going over with the Land Cruiser. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I smashed that out. But uh, it's a lot easier if there's two of you because you've got to hold this to bend it. So we've got uh, three of these now. Now the next thing to do is to work out a way how to tear them, like put legs. I'm not quite sure. What do you reckon, Matt? Any ideas? They're going to the glass house, and what I'm thinking is, is maybe cut some bits of wood out that just screw straight on the end. But they're also going to need to be supported in the middle because there's a lot of dirt, not a lot of weight in them. Any thoughts? Anything going on that brain of yours? Not much at all. A bit like mine. But Matt and I, we're going to take this frame over the glass house and put the panes in. We're going to put it beside where the garlic is. You've broken the glass house, you bastard. <laughs> Jeez, mate, what have you done? <laughs> How'd you manage that? Slid it too far. <laughs> right, what we're going to do is we're going to take out these and we're going to put them outside next to the garlic. I don't know how this is going to work, mate, but we'll see how we go. I'm not going to film it. We got this out with minimal damage. We broke one, but... This is a really, really tight gap, so we need to put it on its side. That'll be, you'll get a walk soon, mate. But I think we're going to be okay, and we got a bit of a crack in the ground too, mate. And that's okay. We got it. We'll both of them out with minimal damage. I'm going to put some stakes on these things, I think. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I reckon they, they look a bit sad. But they are out, and we'll stick this frame up, eh? Stick a wire tar each end, getting this off the ground. Bit of height to clear the plants. This uh, window, this my old bedroom window, it's completely bloody, completely rotten. So I don't know how long it's going to last here, bud. But, uh, no, it should be sweet. It's our first window, just fitting beautifully like it was made for it. Oh, it was made for it. Another beautiful day here in Tasman. Arb's on the job, and I'm carrying on with my planter boxes, which I got a bit of help from Daniel, and I got a bit of help from Firewood Matt, and also made one myself. So the thing is, we've got everything out of the glass house over here. Or most of it to make that more efficient by putting these in the glass house and we want to have them in steps one two three so one on the ground one above that one going back that way and I've got choices I can put legs on them like I could put a couple of bits of wood each end and a piece in the middle maybe or I could make bench seats like long bench seats each one sits on I only need two because one will be going on the ground I don't know yet I'm gonna go explore them the wood I've got, and the wood I've got is all uh, wood that was bought to me by Firewood Matt. It's all untreated, so it's going to be inside the glass house, so oh, eventually it'll break down. But I'm comfortable with that. There's, there's wood around here everywhere. We've got uh, tantalised stuff, we've got this packing here, and I'm a great believer in using what you've got rather than you know, going out and sourcing stuff. Uh, upcycling or recycling, what do you want to call it? I've got a pile of this stuff over here which I actually, that's left over from what Arb's taken out of my house, which is old framing. And I got a list from a place, uh, my mate Simon's place, they were re cladding it with corrugated iron. So I took that because I thought that'd be good for planter boxes and also to finish off the boys' hut that they're building down here. I'll just show you down the end here, they've got their 
the hut that's a project for our boot camps we're running down there so they've got they can clad it and I've also got this and I've got this here now this wood here is not uh, it's not uniform although some of it's not too far off it it's not a bad bit but it's got a break in it that's probably why they gave it to us what else we got underneath there hey Pope this bit yeah that's not bad is it well we could do something with that definitely definitely do something with that make a bench seat out of that and what do you reckon Bruno this piece under here we'll do one at a time we'll take this one first and then come back to it do you like eating duck yeah yeah well there's there's one week in left next weekend's the last weekend of duck shooting duck New Zealand yeah oh, yeah okay yeah are you keen to come yeah I could do I could bring me um duck caller with me have you got a duck caller yeah 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 it's um it's uh it's quite a good trick tip for you for you hunters and shooters so um calling all ducks calling all ducks calling all ducks my first time duck shooting with Simon Fowler I was out there with his mate Cam and him and they were doing their duck calls you know that duck Duck yep. hunters are really like duck shoes are really anal about their duck calls. They've got all the different things around their neck, and they're like, you got to get it right, you know. And so I said, can you guys do that without your duck caller? And they went, no, but no. And I said, well, I can. I've got, I've got it down. And they said, yeah. And I said, yeah. So we're in the in the thing there, and they're all serious. And I just went. <laughs> what I'm putting here behind all these flashings and stuff like that to waterproof them. Is a polyurethane sealant. It's called Sealant Flex. It's a plastic one, and I use a this gun here for it. It's really cool because you can adjust your speed, and it's continual. So if I have to do a long bead, it's a perfectly same width long bead all the way along. Because normally when you're pulling the trigger on a small gun, as you back off the trigger, there's a little bit of pressure left, but not a lot is left. You know, so then the tape is down, and you can't get a continual bead. These guns are worth their weight in gold. Doing any neat sealing or anything, you can just push it. Just go continually all the way along and when you stop them they back the pressure off immediately they roll back a bit which is unlike a trigger gun which you actually have to click the back of it off and in the time it takes you to do that there's a little splurt that comes out and it leaves a lump there that you end up trying to tool off later on it's like so right. yeah these things are really cool so this is sickens this is what we're coating the weather boards with it's the best stuff the pigment separates from the base when it just sits here so what you do is you just leave your stirring stick in the bucket and whenever you see any stripes in there and you go oh, it's starting to separate a bit and you just give it a bit of a stir you know you probably stir it every 15 minutes when you're using it the brushes it's oil based you leave the brushes in water you just sit them in water otherwise you're going to be washing them out with terps every night and they're going to go hard on a hot day between using it once and using it again the water's not in the terps it's not in the terps based product so you just whip the water out and then what's left in there is sickens it's got no oxygen because it's underwater so it doesn't go off so then every cut on the weatherboard has to be coated. So the weatherboards have been coated both sides. We've got them from Belfast Timber in Christchurch and they've got a painting machine. And they coated, they cut them, oh sorry, they machined them and then they um, coated them for us. Right. And this is relieved out the back for the gasket for that the power, power cable that power, comes through there. Yeah, yep. for light outside, okay. Yep, so uh, because of the caskets, and you're even painting your mitre as well, I see yep, there. Yep, absolutely. You just paint everything. Right. So it's already got one coat, and then we're doing where I've cut it to go over the top of the, the window flashing. Bang. Put it in there. Everything gets a coat of paint. The ones that see the sun will get two more coats of paint. Right, so three in total for the outside. Yep. 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 And then one year later, another coat. Okay. And then theoretically, depending on... I mean, we get a lot of sun in Nelson. We're the sunniest place in New Zealand, so... We're probably maybe two or three years when the when it starts to look dull, really quite dull. Right. Is when you go and do another coat. But the beauty about the sickens is, unlike oil, it doesn't migrate into the timber and then basically not provide any more protection anymore to the actual outside surface. It forms a skin. When you do your fourth coat, it almost looks like it's plastic. Okay. And some people go, oh, I don't like it. But you know what? timber you've got to protect it you do and a lot of people use oil don't they yeah well look i've actually uh, my house is um, lawson cypress some people generically call it macrocarpa it's very similar to cedar quite good outside yep it's quite good you know but the fact is that it needed to be protected against the uv and we're facing west we just get sun on our house every day of the year when it's sunny for the whole time and you can see the difference between the sun side 
and the backside up against the hill. And the previous people had put oil on it. And then when I got there, some of the weatherboards, I'll be replacing some walls before I move out of that house. Right. Because they've just been baked. Baked. They're cracked. They're just destroyed, you know. And it's just the grain of the timber. But what happens is the oil just migrates into the timber and then doesn't provide that surface protection. When I came to do it, I actually went through this whole process and I did a lot of study and I talked to the painters and I go, and I knew this from in Australia as well, that Sickens was always the best product. There was this belief that Sickens was really expensive. Everyone's going, oh, I'm using oil because Sickens is so expensive. Well, it was pretty much the same price for 20 litres. Right. I bought some oil. I bought 40 litres of oil. I was going to do it in oil. And then I talked to about three other people after that. I returned the oil back to the supplier. I yep. got through ITM. Returned it back. And then I went and bought Sickens. Right. Because I thought, I just not, we've got quite a lot of walls on our house. I'm not going to get it wrong. I just don't want to get it yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, bloody oath. And uh, your but, house looks beautiful, mate. Yeah. And look, it was all black. We got it. It was all black. I got a, a rotary power washer on my water blaster, yep. which spins around and it doesn't concentrate the jet and destroy all the grain on the timber. So right. I could do three weatherboards at once and I just slowly washed it. You could see the oil was pouring out right. while I was washing it. The timber came up stunning. Wow. Still surface was damaged from the sun, but generally it came out really good. Mm. And then we got one of my Christmas holidays was doing three coats on the whole house. That was right. just my, my hand at the end of the holiday was like shaking like this because you were holding a big brush like this, yeah. dipping it in and just, and the first coat sucked in. So you were just going through, well, we went through 80 litres yeah. of seconds. We just finished and that's a, that's a lot of money because I paid Six, what? 629 bucks yeah. for 20 litres. Yeah, right. Yeah, so mm. two and a half grand we've been through. Just some paint. But it's simple. It was like, okay, replace the weatherboards in the next 10 years. We'll get two and a half grand's worth of coating onto it. And get and, how much more out of that? Oh, look, I think we're going to get another 20 or 30 years yeah, out of right. it. So what I'm going to try and do is just get my nozzle in there, in behind the wire. Can I give you an extra hand up on the wire? Oh, you could pull the wire down, just mate. Just pull the wire down a bit there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can, yeah. There we go. Just Bang. Yeah, nice. That's it. Right, you can hear it going. She's filling up. Yeah. Here we go. Did we get enough of there? Yep, all oh, mate. There's heaps in there. You watch this. Oh yeah, yeah, there's two yeah. beauty. It's like a pimple. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful mate. Do you want to do me a favour and pass me the small nail gun just down there on the ground? Yeah bro. What do I do is I tack him, I just tack him at the top. Like that. To keep him from falling out. And that just holds him in place for me. Well I can get this join. There you go, it is. <laughs> we like it like that, don't we? Nice, mate. That'll do. Got Simon from ITM arrived. That'll do. No barking. Hey, bro. That looks good, bro. That's awesome. Good. Awesome. There you go, Sly. Simon. Good to see you, mate. All right. All right. Good to see you, man. Taking along. Sorry. Ticking along. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the easy ones are either side. Either side of the door. Smack, 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 smack. <laughs> yeah, now you got the difficult ones to go. Yeah, well, this was it, really, this one. Over the over the uh, head flashings and sort of stuff. Well, look at that. That's what happened on that four. Yeah, it fell, didn't it? Yeah. A little bit's dropped out of there. Yeah, it's a bit like when you drop your rifle and you knock your scope. She's crooked, mate. you got to start fresh. I'm doing this.
this with this to get it in line. I'm hand nailing these because I can't get my gun in there. Yeah, right. And um, there's a risk that they um, they get close to grain in different places, like ends and all that sort of stuff. So. Right. And now I've got to pull this bit off up here because they put their foot through it. Yeah, right. So I'll screw those purlins down there with some bugle batten screws while I'm at it. There'll be one piece still left behind. <laughs> so while Arb's putting that in, I'm carrying on my planter box. And the idea is I'm just going to make boxes. Like four of these. I've cut out a whole lot, as you can see all around me here. Up smashing out the weatherboard. Looking good. Getting all in, and I'm I'm doing my planter box. I've got a uh, couple of legs at each end, and I'm gonna put one in the middle. That is not for you, Poe. No, it's not, mate. That's my bone broth. It's our lunch time and I don't actually have lunch, but today I'm having bone broth because I have had an upset gut since Thursday. I either picked up a stomach bug or I ate the wrong sort of berries. And I'm thinking it's heading towards the berries. I ate some guava berries that uh, were, the, I think, the ornamental type, not the ones you can eat. But for the last four days I haven't been on the whole food down. So that's why I'm having some bone broth because uh, if you do get an upset guts, uh, the old chicken soup's good, eh? Chicken soup. Yep. It's standard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But bone broth is really good too. And I've got some beef bone broth here with a lot of parsley in it, and ginger, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, salt, and pepper, a wee bit of garlic, and it tastes bloody good. It's not like a big massive feed, but it gets your electrolytes up and um, hydrates you. It tastes bloody good. What's your lunch today, bro? Uh, there was um, cheese and avocado on a uh, wholemeal sourdough. Mm. Um, kiwi fruit. Yep, orange apple, yogurt, um, and some apple pie to sign, kind of thing. Apple pie? Yeah, an apple, mm -hmm. apple sort of pastry. Oh, Poe trying to get it on the act low. Poe did manage to get a uh, a uh, crust she off did. the sandwich. Yet. What she did? Oh, Poe. Yeah, well, she was just giving me those eyes, you know. <laughs> I'm only human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I could actually do with more. But that's all right. Well, do you want some tucker? No, it's cool. Yep. I'll do that orange and I'll be good. Okay. Poe's actually not supposed to be up here on the veranda. And she's got this thing where she moves in really slow to Arb. Like suddenly she's there. You don't see it, eh? She's like <laughs> creeps in really slow to get a pat. She keeps her eyes reasonably closed. So it's that doughy look. So it's like you go, oh, can't help myself but pat Poe. Old tail wagon. Yep. <laughs> tail wagon. She's happy. All dogs want is a pet and a bit of love, eh? Yep. They don't ask for much. Dogs are the best pets in the world. Well, cats are good pets too. There's a lot of good pets, but dogs are great because if you're poor and you can't feed them, they'll stay by you. I've been out in the bush. I went out for five days about, oh, probably would have been 40 at the time, so we're talking 16 years ago now, and I had three dogs, and I thought, oh, well, we'll go, we'll go away for a week, and I thought, I'd, as usual, I'll just take some peas and some potato, and we'll, we'll shoot a goat, the dog tucker, and we got nothing the first two days, and like no tucker, and I just had peas and potatoes, and dogs had nothing. And you know, it wasn't until day five we actually got some meat. So all those days, the dogs went, and they stayed by me, and they are so loyal, they didn't disappear to go and find food. They could have, they could have gone off and got right, we'll pack together. And they are, they're really, really like, uh, loyal. Man's best friend. Yeah, man's best friend. I don't know if a man's always their best friend, though. No, not necessarily, yeah. in some cases. Yep. It always hurts me to see these videos of cruelty and stuff like that, dog. I, don't, I never watch you know, like I like, never watch them man. Neither do I, I can't I can't watch them. People send me stuff like, you know, how they, they um process them alive in China and that. I don't want to see that. No. Nah. I know it goes on, I can't do anything about it. Um really it's 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 hideous, it's horrible. And you know, uh it comes down to intent. They intentionally hurt the animal. Yeah. That's that's that to me is unhuman, you know. Yeah. Very, human or right. Yeah, it's inhuman. The world has that in it, and uh, that's just not in our world here. Although some people would argue you hunt wild pig with dogs, and that's also inhumane, and it is, and there's no way you can sugarcoat it. 
yeah. my response to that argument would be that um in nature wolves do just that that's what they do and dogs are basically wolves anyway yeah and the only difference with pig hunting is there's a man there to get there quicker to do the coup de gras in nature the wolves would just eat the pig alive they yeah. just tear off and we have no natural predation on our pigs here in new zealand or a deer or anything so hunting with dogs is actually a really really good way to keep the biodiversity in check and you could say what you like about it but you know at the end of the day we, we've got to control those feral pigs in new zealand if we don't absolutely yeah. They, they have like two litters a year. They can have up to eight in a litter. That litter can throw babies after six months. You do the mass on that. It doesn't take long for explosion. Yeah, they're prolific breeders. Yep. Unlike deer, deer only have like one a year. I don't think I've ever seen twins of deer. Comment if you've ever seen twins of deer. I never have, eh? I'm sure they do. I've just never seen it in the, in the wild. I have in Germany. I've seen it. You've seen in Germany, yeah? Yeah, yeah, deer with two kids. Mm. Around my mate's farm, actually, on the hill in yep. northern Germany. So, But whether they were hers or not, I don't know. Mm. You know, like they look the same size, sort of thing. Probably does happen, I've just never seen it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, sometimes when you're doing mitres on timber like this, it's quite hard to get a measurement when you've got to check all these out for that along the top. So, what I've done is I've made myself a board that's the mitre, and then 100 millimetres away from where my short point is is where I can hook my tape on. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit that in there and then I'm going to measure these all down, all the way along, draw it up, add 100 mils onto it and that will be my board. That will be the length of my board. So to hold it up there, I've drilled a hole in it and now I'm just going to tack a nail in. And then basically I'm going to now just go and map out, put my tape in there and then go and measure all my bits and pieces all what around. a smart idea yeah that's brilliant man yeah i never would have thought of that brilliant yeah oh, it's yeah. easier to do it one-handed then you could have someone holding it here too but if it's nailed in it won't move yeah and then i can map it all out brilliant okay and the next part is i've got to check out around these rafters so i just use a piece of weatherboard that's square cut and i just push it up to the rafter give it a couple of mils mark it both sides mark it so that's how i get all the marks where i'm going to cut out Right. So then, when I'm running along with my tape measure, I know exactly 456 mils, 509 mils, 1 metre and 45, 1 metre and 95, etc, etc. It's, it's a continual running measurement, so it's not a compounding, it's not me measuring going, oh yeah, that's 450 and the next one. Yeah, it's right. It's compounding error. Mm -hmm. And then by that time I get down to the far end, I'm out by 30 mils or something. Which happens, eh? Yeah, it can do. So yep. then I know... I write on it plus 100. I mean, ideally, I can do. Sometimes you just got to jog your, jog your memory when you got all these things written down. But if I go plus 100 there, then yep. bang, I never forget it, you know? Yeah. And then that way I get a, a map of this whole thing, and I should be able to cut the whole thing. I'll be measuring up here too to see how much of a checkout I make. Yeah. And then I should be able to cut it all down there, and it should fit bang. Mm. Too Good easy. So I've made up my middle leg, and as you can see, it's split. Got a split that's gone right through it. Don't know how that happened or when it happened, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to be sitting directly like that, and the pressure's going to be there. So we've got one there, one there, and one down here. So that's my stool or bench for the planter. And over here, what are you doing, Ubs? So now I'm doing the second half of this. Yep. And what I've done is that running measurement that I measured from up there. Yep. To make it again easier. I'll put my tape on the right position where it's going to be with a little clamp. Oh, yep. So then I can just carry on and I'm basically transferring those measurements to here. It's got to be right. That's the, the way it works. Remembering to add on 100 mils while I was doing this. What I've written down. Right. So, so then it's quite methodical and quite easy and it's not as daunting as going, oh, how do I get it to fit underneath all those things? Mm. Well, when Simon from ITM came, he was saying it's a difficult job. It's involved, mm. yeah, you know, and it's, it's always good to measure twice and double check and check things out. And, you yeah, know. you've got a few friends helping you down here, I see too. Yeah, that's right, yep, we're all on board here. It's time. You're a good boy, aren't you, eh? Do you want another walk, eh? Hey? Well, you've already had two, eh? Hey? Give me another one. I've got to put my planter box in the glass house, mate, so you just have to wait for a bit, yeah? Okay, good boy. That's your good boy. So there's all the plants we took out of the glass house. So we've grown all those in a space. We've got this now set up pretty much uh, keep the chickens out and also allow it to not get the frost too much. Got a bit of this clear light below and just, just to stop the 
Yeah, chicken's getting in there. It's, it's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm taking those two muscle boys down there out with all the plants. We've now freed up all this here, all this space in the glass house, and that's why I made these planter boxes. I'm not sure where I'm going to put this one here yet. Maybe I'll stick it at the end, I don't know. It's uh, doing okay, but uh, what we're going to do is put our planter boxes in here. The last planter I made in here, a corrugated irons, went really well. You can see it's, uh, it's full up with plants right at the very end there. That's as far as it goes. These ones I've just made now the same length as that. Hey Po, here's my planter boxes and this is the stool that I've made on the big long bench. That one sits on there nicely and this one here will go higher. I'll do a third one where it'll be a second stool at least so we've got the steps. One step, two step and three steps. But before I go any further I've got to punch some holes in the bottom of these. Last one to get in. Yeah. It's gonna go though. It's, it's gonna go down a bit. Yeah, I've got a little bit of it over here. So I've been using the Devolt drill to do a few of these, but Arbs lent me his Hilti, which is really good uh, and much more powerful, much faster. Does it muck around? That quick. Perfect. So what I'm thinking of is I've got the first tier here, second tier here, and the third tier, rather than building another whole bench seat, why not make use of this piece that goes right along here, screwed to it, right throughout, and bring it flat off the flush, with a couple of legs, and the leg maybe in the middle as well, and then sit the third tier straight up on top of that. That's the north side of the glass house, so there's actually room there, and it doesn't matter if we lose a bit of sun, because as you can see this uh, goes right across here, it's solid, it's screwed into here and it will be strong enough with a bit of help with a few legs. That's my thinking on that. This untreated wood that sell seconds is, it's good for doing stuff in the garden but this is about the best piece I can find from my last shelf, a little bit skinny and it's not as wide as I need but ah she'll do, we'll be right, we'll take this. I say when you build a house, a new house, you've got to allow 10% for landscape gardening. Arb came out and we talked about building and he's, he's a bloke that knows what things cost exactly and he's really, really good with mass. And he looked at the house and he said, nah, he said this here is actually worth, worth saving and worth working with. So as far as the landscape gardening goes, and the gardening goes, like gardening is in vegetable gardening, Everything's got to be done with recyclable timbers, upcycling, stuff like this. I just can't afford to buy a new timber to do the whole job. But all said and done, that's okay. Because if it works and it functions, that's the main thing. How it looks in the glass house is secondary to how it functions. And this will function. G'day. Another way of measuring these little bits that I'm cutting to go in between here. What I've got is again another two pieces at exactly 100 mils. And I've cut them so they're actually smaller than what my finished pieces of timber are going to be. So I'll put them in at either end. I measure between them. That says 290. So that's 490 long, that piece. 490 long. And then the ends, the thickness of it. I put my ruler up there and that's 92. So right at that point there is 92 on my ruler, and right there is 95. So then I go 470, 95 on the left, 92 on the right. 490, sorry, 95 on the left, 92 on the right. That gives me the custom made piece that's going to fit in there. Yeah mate, I haven't forgotten about your walk. So rather than build a whole complete new trestle, like I did the last one, a bench. I've got a piece of wood here. I'm going to stick this piece at the other end. And I'll smack a couple of bits in the middle and buff this up against the inside of the glass house where that piece of wood runs. 
Well this one's not as wide as I would have liked it to be. I've stabilised it in the middle with these slab bits of wood, piece here and a piece there, right to the end, but it's also fixed to the framing, the wood down the back here, and you can see that probably not, but uh, she's nice and tight, so it's, it's sitting on, on top of this, this piece here, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to screw my, my planter box onto it, because it's a pretty flimsy piece of wood, but it'll, it'll hold it, it'll hold the weight. Right, I top one's in, I've got it screwed in, brackets there. Once it's got the dirt, they'll take the weight, there's a little bit of slack, and they're screwed in. So that's my top trough stuck in. I can put the rest in there. It's uh, screwed in. A few of those uh, roof and gutter self-tapping screws. It's going on nicely. That's a really satisfying job. Made the planter boxes all out of recycled materials. That's why nothing's quite straight, that doesn't matter. Non-treated wood, won't last forever, it'll last a while. And I've got it set up in tears. So the sun comes in, gets these plants on the bottom, those, I'll move those out of there, and I'll go in the house by I think. Step, step, step. And that way they can all get plenty of sun. And we're gonna get maximum space out of here. There's also enough room to walk through still. Job done dusted. Now I'm trying to run over my chickens. Anyway, that's the end of another day and a, a day where we achieved what we wanted to get done. Arb's got the cladding now up to here tomorrow morning. He's already cut out a little bit to go on the top of the weatherboard. And also got the bloke from PM Fireplaces coming to price up a fireplace for inside my bedroom because it is cold here and I've always wanted to have that. So it's going to be bloody awesome to have that, that finished. And then we'll look at uh, a bed for the place. The bed I'm currently, or I was sleeping in, is one I made. I made about mm, close to 20 years ago. It was a Super King, and I built it two meters by two meters. It's still inside there, but I'm thinking about a brand new bed with a really good, like, mattress, so I can have really good sleep. Because I'm doing everything else, spending so much money on this, so I want to do it once and do it right and do it properly. Tomorrow morning, we plant. I've got a whole lot of fish meal, and I'm going to put that in with uh, some, was this fish meal? Yeah, that stuff for garden. I'm gonna mix it up with some compost and some dirt and stuff, make a good mix. And put my beds down for growing stuff in. And we're gonna grow some stuff. So that'll be exciting, because uh, it's like all fresh again, and I've got all the vegetables outside. I'm really stoked with how that's gone. Anyway, that was today's video. Good on you for watching it. Time to walk dogs now. You can come for a walk with the dogs with this if you like. This is their third walk today. They have a pretty good life, the dogs here on the farm. <laughs> You'd think you hadn't been walked today, mate. There you go. Choo, he's gone. Father and son, it's not time to make a change. Here you go. Where you go? Pick up! Pick up! Chasing the rabbits down there. Pick up! Face cup! Face cup! Good dog, Pete! Face cup! Good boy! Pick up! Face cup! Come on! Heal up! Pick up! Fuego, país. Fuego.
Montana. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Good luck with all your own stuff, whether it's home renovations, gardening, hunting, fishing, mountain biking, getting out with your dogs, on the farm, with your kids, with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your brother, your sister, your mother, whatever you're doing, your dad, your granddad, your great granddad, have fun. Be good. Can't be good, be careful. These ducks are flying low enough to get a shot off. Look at that there, right over the top of me. See that? Straight over my head, because I haven't got a gun, right over my section. Probably 20 metres above me, boom, boom, duck for night, they know. Come down here with me rifle. Oh, it is a rifle. Come down here with me, 410, and they're not to be seen. It's always the same way. See ya. That'll do. Calm down. Come up. Get out of there, bait. <laughs>